Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Playing around with my Dracanias. Gonna do a repotting. Thought I'd talk about them a little bit. Actually, a couple of repottings. Dracania reflexa variegata. The variegated Dracania reflexa, commonly called the Song of India. Really common, popular house plant. Super beautiful, tropical plant to have indoors. The variegation on the Song of India, the variegated Dracania reflexa, so pretty. And they're pretty easy to grow. I also have your standard Dracania reflexa over here. It has light variegation. It's nothing like the Song of India at all. It's more of a light green variegation. This one's in a rather large pot. I picked it up on clearance last fall and it's just kind of been chilling, doing its thing. You know, it looks like a clearance plant. I'm gonna go ahead and repot that one. And then I'll repot this one too. That's really not rocket science. I'm not gonna make a big deal out of that part. A Dracania reflects in native to areas like Madagascar, Mozambique, other islands around the Indian Ocean. They like a really, really well-drained soil. So for this mix, I've just used a standard potting soil, a lot of sand, probably about, I've added 40% to the total volume. A Little bit of slow release. Instead of adding more perlite, I put in some hardwood bark pieces. This is just orchid bark. I would prefer to actually use lava stone and something like this, but crushed lava is really hard to come by around here. I haven't seen it for sale like anywhere. So instead I'm using the bark chunks, which is fine. It's just when using something like this, you want to make sure you, you repot every like year and a half to two years. And that's just because over time as organics break down inside of a potting mix, they start to compact and retain a lot of moisture, which I wouldn't have to worry about with lava stone. And you can see here, looking at the roots of this big guy that I'm about to replant here, this is an an extremely, extremely sandy soil, which is good. They like that. And you can see right here on this newer growth that's in here, that's about where the soil line was. I did work out some of the old soil that was in there. Very lightly rubbed the sides of the roots. The roots weren't wrapped very much, so I'm not worried about it being root bound. It wasn't root bound. I'd even probably call this a premature repotting, but like I said, I was just having so much trouble keeping this poor thing hydrated. And they're not a plant that likes a ton and a ton of water, so I figured, I should go ahead and bump it up into something with some fresh soil that holds on to just a little bit more moisture. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish topping that off, lightly pack that soil around there and water it in. This is done, very simple. Okay, and I'm going to do the exact same thing with the uh, actual Song of India, the variegated one right here. But I did wanna just take a moment to appreciate these roots. Aren't they absolutely beautiful? The soil was above there. I'd already knocked off the soil that was covering that up, but so pretty, so vibrant and orange. That's gorgeous. Now I'm repotting this one just the same as the other one. I'm gonna go ahead, fill it in with some soil. I'll move the plant just a little bit to each side, work that soil around the roots, water it in. I got some soil on the foliage, so give that a rinse too. Quick and easy. Dracania reflexa. Let's talk about the care a little bit. I suppose I could have waited to repot these when I was talking about their soil requirements and drainage and everything, but it's just, you gotta admit, this is much prettier to look at, right? That's why I did that first. Uh, as I mentioned before, these are super easy to grow house plants. Typically the Song of India, the variegated variety, is one you'll find at the nurseries in a much smaller pot, something that you can have out on a tabletop or on your counter, something like that. But over time, they do grow, and it's not something like an African violet where you'll be able to keep it on the counter for many, many years. They don't grow crazy fast, but they will get anywhere indoors, I'd say three to six feet is probably where that's going to be. Outdoors, they're said to get up to 18 feet, which would be a really impressive thing to see. I have seen larger ones when I've been on vacation, like St. Thomas in Jamaica, that are probably like 10 to 12 foot at the biggest, and it is, they look really, really cool. And that's because they have a growth that just kind of goes all over the place, which you can kind of see on this larger one in the back. The trunks on them have a twisting, kind of curving habit to them. As they get larger, it looks really airy, three to six feet high inside with a slow to moderate growth. The more light, the faster they're going to grow. However, the Song of India, the variegated variety, I mean, these are both variegated. The Song of India, however, having this lighter, creamy variegation on them, they do not like much light at all. None of them like a lot of light. None of them want direct sunlight, but these will scorch in direct sun with that variegation on them. So bright, indirect light, if you're keeping this indoors, put it somewhere in the house where it's going to get indirect light on it, filtered light, for I'd say a minimum of probably four to five hours a brightly lit room. I've seen many websites call them a low light plant, which is, 
somewhat true. They'll tolerate low light for a while, but the growth tends to get sort of spindly, a little bit wonky, and uh, within probably, I would say, like six months to a year, they're not gonna look that hot. So when possible, more is better. Like I said though, just not direct. These sunburn very easily. And that was something that I did have to face when I moved this larger one outside. I acclimated it and still like just the littlest bit of light kind of scorched some of the foliage, which you can see there. So I ended up moving it into like pure shade for a few weeks, just it really needed to recover. So with this one right here, I'm not gonna be putting that into any direct light at all. And they also don't need an awful lot of watering. I have found personally, and this is gonna vary from climate to climate and you know, where you are on the planet latitude wise and whatnot but for me personally i generally let the top not i mean couldn't even call it top probably i'd say 30 to 50 percent of the soil dry out before watering them again and that's typically just when i have them inside and the temperatures are much cooler however during the active growing season i mean they're tropical so typically i mean they would be actively growing all year but when you're keeping these outside of that zone in a pot where you're for me, I move them inside during the fall and winter and outside during the late spring through summer. When they're outside in the warmth, that's when I water them much more frequently. And that's why that soil needs to drain really, really well. Outside, as long as you have good airflow and temperatures are warmer, then they're going to need more water, more frequent watering, I should say. Just because of the warmer temperatures and the higher airflow, the soil is going to dry out a little bit faster. Now inside, if it's really dry where you live during the winter months, then you may still need to water it more frequently. And to keep the growth nice and even on them when growing them indoors in the very bright, nicely lit rooms, it's a good idea to go ahead and rotate them. I would say monthly to every other month, just that they don't all start growing in one direction. These are also typically a plant that doesn't need to be fed very heavily during the active growing season, meaning, like I said, late spring through summer, temperatures are warmer. That's when they need a little bit more water and whatnot. Then I will fertilize mine monthly with probably a half to quarter strength solution fertilizer. And I'm just going to use like an all purpose, but there are, you know, all types of like compost teas and things like that, fish fertilizer, seaweed fertilizer, you name it, that all work really well. And it's important to remember that with soluble fertilizers, the salt-based ones, that those salts accumulate over time. So if you are really good about fertilizing and you want to do like a quarter strength every couple of weeks, that's probably okay. But it's also a good idea then to make sure to flush the soil every so often, at least probably every, I'd say, eight weeks or so to help get those salts out. All through winter when they're indoors, no fertilizer. They don't need it. Not unless you have like an atrium or a sunroom or really warm location to keep them, which they do appreciate. They don't like cold drafts. They don't like cold water. They're really always going to do their best above 65 degrees. So the warmer the location in the house, the better. And if it is very warm, say mid 70s and up and really, really bright and sunny, then you could keep fertilizing it. Otherwise, you don't need to. Let them rest. Don't water them anywhere near as often. If you do fertilize a plant like this, this is sort of the same thing with the Janet Craig, the Janet Craig Dracania. Fertilizing them when they're not getting the light they want to keep on growing, the warmth and all of those things, it can end up like triggering them to grow because they're receiving the nutrient to grow, but it's not gonna look great. It's not going to be the proper type of growth. It can be kind of thin, spindly, sort of like when you grow them in shade. They just don't need it if they're not taken off and doing their thing. Even though they do appreciate some humidity, I haven't had many issues with leaf tip browning on mine, and I have very, very low humidity during the winter time, like usually around 30%, which I know that might seem high to some people, but when you grow in a lot of tropical plants, 30% is not much. If you do notice that there are some brown tips on yours, then you can mist it, put a pebble tray underneath it with some water, but make sure that the bottom of the pot is not in contact with the water. You want it raised up a little bit above there. That evaporation can help with the surrounding humidity a little bit. Always mist with caution. If you notice that there are spots developing on the foliage when you've been misting for a little while, stop. That means they don't like it. There's either something in the water that's sitting on there that the foliage doesn't appreciate, or there can be like fusarium spotting, which can happen with the Dracania reflexa. They don't flower too terribly often. The flowers are somewhat insignificant. Mine did flower over the winter time. Let me come up and get a better shot of that. Here are the old tips from where the flowers were. And you can see now that that has fallen off of there and it's the flowering has finished. It's gone ahead and decided it's going to put up offshoots from the side. So it's stopping that growth from there. Whereas over here on this tip, you can see it didn't flower and that growth is continuing on up. Would you please focus? There we go. There, you see what I'm talking about? Right there. And I don't mind that it's doing that over there. These actually look really cool when they start to branch out. The more branches, 
they get a really neat sort of airy vibe to them. Lots of twisty and turny points and growth tips. Looks pretty cool. Also, cats really like to chew on these. Keep them away. They are considered, at least by the ASPCA, to be toxic to dogs and cats. I've seen other sites that are like, no, it's fine, but it can upset their stomach, which means that means it's not good for them. If they do start to get too big for you and you're not liking them being a tall plant, you don't want it as a floor plant, you want to keep it as a tabletop plant, you can prune them. They respond very well to pruning. And where you make your cut is going to end up looking just like up here where that head is, the new growth will start to come out from the sides. And you can take the cutting, everything that was above that, remove some of the foliage that so there's probably, I'd say, maybe two inches of clear stem on it, and you can drop that into a pot of soil that's fairly moisture retentive. Keep it moist until you start to notice a little bit of new growth. That means it's got some roots going. Always helps to dip them into a rooting hormone as well. And there have been times in the past when I have trimmed a Dracania reflexa and like didn't feel like potting it up into its own special potting medium to root it and I just took the new growth and stuck it down in the pot and it did okay and took off but that was outdoors also temperatures were much warmer more humid and it was getting water more frequently inside I don't know how well they would respond to that but I mean, you could try as far as pests are concerned scale something to watch out for white fly mealybug pretty much all the common indoor houseplant type things one thing that's really nice about them when they're at a smaller size is that if I do start to notice insects on them I can just take them to the kitchen sink and just blast the bugs off of them and then you keep watching it spray some neem on it from time to time the top of the foliage the other side of the foliage until you see it running off until there's no more signs of pests works pretty well when they get bigger it's a little bit more tricky and they're supposed to be really prone to mealybug i haven't had any issues with that which is surprising because i've been battling some mealybugs for quite a long time now but they haven't really had a taste for them which is odd because i typically see that mealybugs are problematic on the song of india on the jerkania reflexo I don't know. I guess I got lucky there. I'm not sure. Browning tips can mean that the air is too dry, that they're not getting enough water. Yellowing tips can often mean they're getting too much water. Sometimes they'll keep their foliage from the top all the way down to the bottom of the trunk. You can snap those off, but do it gently and make sure the plant is well hydrated so that you'll have more of an open trunk, which is something I'm starting to see with my larger plant that is up here. There's some foliage I could pull off to make it look a little bit more tidy. Since I just repotted it, I'm going to hold off on that for a few weeks and then I'll pull those off. You can see that foliage right there in the very middle where it's like there's open trunk underneath it and above it looks kind of weird but I don't I've already messed with it enough today I don't want to stress it out even more the dracanias as a whole are typically sensitive to fluoride in the tap water so that can cause the foliage to yellow it can cause the foliage to brown it can cause some spotting in the foliage sometimes the leaves will become kind of flaccid and limp looking even though everything that the person's going to take care of the plant is just what it needs to be and that can be an indication maybe you have fluoride in your water you can usually find out online if that's the case and then it would probably be a good idea to switch to using a bottled water or some type of filtered water that doesn't have the fluoride in it over time that can build up and they don't appreciate it all right it's not their jam with these being such an incredibly common house plant i do know sometimes people like to spray the foliage with the leaf shine stuff I usually advise against that just because that clogs the pores on the plants and plants transpire, meaning that moisture, there's a moisture exchange that happens that just like we sweat, plants do the same thing and it comes out of the pores and the foliage and those shine products can clog those up or do clog those up and it can prevent them from being able to transpire. So maybe avoid doing that if you can. They don't really need it. They already have pretty shiny glossy foliage just as they are. And like I mentioned they're a warm loving plant. They like things warm and humid. So most things online will say hardy zones 11 and up. I've seen them in zone 10 before. Let me know some of your experiences with the Dracania reflexa. Especially you guys down in Florida. Where do you guys see these growing? Because like I said I see them listed as zone 11 and up but I know I've seen them in places like Miami before. So well, what's going on there? Sometimes hardiness ratings can be really conservative or it's just one of those things where you could grow it outside that zone, but maybe there'll be an off winter, which does happen in South Florida sometimes where they're not gonna tolerate like a drop at where it's 38 degrees, something like that. Moisture is probably also a factor in there as well. You know, some place that has a lot of rain during the winter time and has lows that are commonly in the 50s, and no warm temperatures during the day or after those cold snaps, 
they wouldn't respond well to that. So I, I guess I could see that hardiness rating. But yeah, comment down below, tips, tricks, anything you have to add. It's impossible to remember everything to put into these videos. I always love hearing what people have to say about them. It's one of those plants, kind of like the Janet Craig, where I see people who are like, this is the easiest plant. And then there are other people who are doing everything properly and it doesn't grow that well for them. I feel like I hear that more with the Janet Craig than with this one particularly. There's so many variables, it fascinates me. I may underplant this larger one here with something. I haven't decided yet. If I do, I'll have that posted up on my social media. There'll be updates on there as well as in future garden tours. So all my social media is linked down below. I'm mostly on Instagram. That's probably the best place to follow me. And I do try and follow everybody back. Sometimes I don't see when people have followed me. So that happens sometimes, but I'm trying. I'm trying my best. It's fun seeing everybody's plant pictures and nerding out together. And don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. It makes a huge difference for the videos and for the channel. I really do appreciate it. So thank you. And subscribe as well and hit the notification bell because I upload multiple times a week. I know I've spent like most of this video just zooming in on this foliage but it's because the foliage is just so stinking pretty on these isn't it sometimes i'm not always crazy about variegation it depends on the plant but on the song of india the way it varies from the lighter green up top on the newer foliage and then it as it ages turns into more of a creamy color i think it just looks nice and it helps light up a room when it's inside. Oh, and it's like all dracanias, they are clean air plants. Always nice to have clean air plants in the house, isn't it? All right, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. And as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.